And good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to those people who were watching my stream earlier on. Uh, and the first thing is, yeah, this is all very haphazard. This is not Ryan Courtney. This is Vita Lacerda. Say hello while I change the text quickly. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hello, Paul. I'm seeing three of me. Right you are. Now. <laughs> yes. I just need to take off uh, that one. There you go. Right. So, yes. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining in. This is a live Q&A with Mr. Vital Lacerda. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing, I'm, I'm doing great. It's always a pleasure, Paul. It's always good to talk you. to you. We don't speak for a while already, right? Since uh, I can't. Well, I, I speak to you so often. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. Obviously, we missed seeing you, each other at LyriaCon today. Uh, not today, yeah. this year. That's sad, right? Oh, it yeah. is. It is sad, but, uh, you know. A lot of cons are being cancelled, and, and, and that's. Con and uh, SM2, so yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, Not so big day for us. So. <laughs> you're giving up some of your time today to demo some of your games at Virtual GridCon. Yeah, we'll be. Uh, when are you doing the first one? Is it just after this interview? Yes, we will play Kanban. I hope we have a full table. Yep. So, yeah, I, I'm eager to it because these latest months. That's practically how I played games. So yeah. Me and everybody, right? So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we played a lot online. Well, at least we can still play games. That's yes, a, we can still play good. games. So yeah, you've got a uh, you've got a full people uh, a full table full of people this afternoon for uh, playing Kanban EV on Tabletopia, and then later on this evening you're demoing another game which isn't out yet. Yeah, it isn't, and uh, I have a box here. Can I can I show the box? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's Mercado de Lisboa, it's a small box, my first one from Eagle Driven Games, and I have a review copy here just right. uh, to see if everything is okay, so okay. yeah, you are seeing firsthand, it's yeah. the review copy of Mercado de Lisboa. Okay, it's now that game is, is game. finished. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry, Paul. the, ga the game is finished. You've you not yeah, still. The yeah, ready. it's it's it's, uh, it's ready. Okay. It's my first game with only three pages of rules. Uh, nice. You you wasn't involved, but I, I wasn't involved. <laughs> uh, because you, you don't need it. It's only three pages. <laughs> well, I I will let you know when I read it. I'll let yeah, you know. I think well, I think it's okay. I think okay, okay. Well. So when when's yeah, that game? Great editor, anyway. So yeah. when when is that game coming out? Well, uh, I think the Kickstarter is uh, is uh, for September three. Okay. It started in September three. So, but yeah, um, these these are review copies uh, for the Eagle Griffin to send to the reviewers. Probably you right. get one. I don't know. Okay. Uh, just talk with Randall. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll I'll drop him a message and let him yeah. know. Um, right. Quick question in from the chat. It's a really oh wait! It's a really quick game. It's it plays in thirty minutes, and you can yeah. teach it in five. So yeah. Nice. Uh, quick question in from the chat from uh, AC Geek. What is it that you're wearing? Well, I am wearing a sweatshirt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's something uh, related with music. It says harmony, musical harmony in okay. Japanese. So, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Um, I, so, I'm yeah. learning how to play saxophone. So. Yes. Yeah, I saw that. How how is it going? Oh, not terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you ask that to my daughters, and she, she she they will tell you that is horrible. Right. Okay. <laughs> because it, it's a loud uh, instrument, so uh, I cannot play it uh, slow so, or, or or too low. So well, it's not very friendly. To the right. neighbors <laughs> and everybody's at home at this time you know? yes yeah. yeah but what made you want to start learning the saxophone oh i don't know uh, a new challenge i like challenges so okay sander just offered me one uh, this late christmas and i love right. music and i always I, I hear a lot of jazz and blues so and i always like to learn an instrument right and it's it's not an easy thing to do yeah, uh, learn an instrument is very difficult. Cool. <laughs> yeah, at least for me. So. Yeah. So because I haven't planned this interview at all, I don't have any questions for you whatsoever. It's just okay. basically for people in the chat. So if anybody's got any questions, please put them in the chat. Uh, and the questions are already in. So uh, one man and his meeple. Andy wants to know: Will Mercado be on Tabletopia? 
Yeah, Mercado. Oh, Mercado is on tabletop, but only private because yes. of the playtesting, and it also has a solo. But if you want to play it, just join my Discord right now, yeah. and you can play it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So join join yeah. Vital's Discord yeah. server, and you can and you can play it. Yeah. There are some open uh, tables for people yeah. playtesting there. So yeah. Cool. Uh, Leanne wants to know, what comes first for you in designing a game? Is it the idea of a theme and a goal or a central mechanism? Well, everybody knows that as a writer. I know <laughs> that, but Leanne wants to know I that. A lot of time. Yeah, usually I, I work on the team and yeah. I, I do a lot of research and then I add the mechanics to the team. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's why people sometimes complain that my games are too complex or the mechanics should be um, more simple, but I don't want to lose the um, the feeling of the story that I'm building uh, mm -hmm. around the game. So yeah, that's why sometimes the mechanisms are a little bit less simple than they could be, or maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I, I like to keep the feeling of the story and the team on the game. So. Yeah, but as you say, you, you know, when you were designing on Mars, you decided you wanted to create a game about you know colonizing or building on, a, a, on, ba on Mars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Lisboa was the same. Uh, I, I did a lot of research about the, the catastrophe, the the problems that Lisboa suffered at that time. Um, Kanban, I had a lot of research first about uh, lean production. And, yeah. Uh, um, Vino is the same. My my, my uncle is um, is related to to wines some way, and she he, he's a. Um, uh, I don't know the name in English. I think it's a agronom engineer. It's it's correct. Okay. And so yeah, that's and he's related with wine. So I I talk with him a lot and uh, I get them some ideas to right. build the game. So I always do that. <clears throat> okay. So. Cool. We have a few people in the chat that are actually on your Discord uh, channel. So Mohammed is basically saying that they you you had a tournament for Mercado de Lisboa. Yeah, I did one. It was cool. We right. we made around 100 games. So yeah, it was. It, it took about two months, and we had a winner. <laughs> and the winner nice. got the game. So <laughs> nice, cool. Um, so we have another question in from AC Geek, uh, and he wants to know. You know the game idea that you stole from me about the weather machine? Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> did I? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, Do you not remember the conversation that yeah, we had? Yeah, where I the conversation last year. Uh, yeah, year, and I, last year in LeriaCon, right? Yeah, and I, I was I was telling Vittel about a game that I've been working on and I've had ideas of, and it's about a weather machine. And he said, "Well, I'm actually working on a game about a weather well, machine." It's like, can, can we say great minds think the same? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, mine was going to be like a you know a 45 minute family friendly fairly light card game. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. no. <laughs> it's not friendly, family friendly game. No. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's an epic complex game, just yeah. like the ones I usually do. Yeah. So, so can, yeah. what can you tell us I, about it? Well, I, I, I can't tell you much unless how I'm building the game because it's in the early, early playtesting right now. So, but um, the main, the, the main idea is like uh, a crazy scientist just discover a weather machine. So you can uh, manipulate the weather around the world. So many people are interested in having the, the machine and especially militaries and corporate companies. So it's a struggle for using the machine as, as uh, most as you can. And um, the player who can use, get a better use of the machine uh, is the, the winner of the game. Right. Uh, but uh, meanwhile, you have some some new layers that in the history where the, the scientist is struggling for you for to for you to use the machine only for the good instead for the bad. And the military wants the machine as a as a war machine, right? So yeah. And you have all of these in the game, but but it's it's still cooking. It's not finished yet. And right. It will take at least one more year. Yeah. Okay. So just going back to what you said a few minutes ago. You come up with the idea of a theme for the game and then you do lots of research. So you did lots of research into Mars. You did lots of research into, you know, lean production for Kanban and things like that. What research have you done into weather machines? Well, yeah, there is a lot. Okay. 
yeah, it's exciting because there is a lot of information about that, and uh, people tell. Of course, it's internet. You don't know if the stories are, yeah. are, are are true or not. But people tell tell that uh, the first time a weather machine was used, it was during Vietnam. Okay. So to 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 make it rain and to 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 lower the morale of the troops, the American right. troops there. So it was used by the the Vietnamese. Oh, right. uh, so okay. yeah, and there is a lot of stories after that. Uh, stories from NASA and stuff so, so like that. And right. I, I use that material and some books that I read uh, about that issue or that that team uh, to build the right, the game. But right. yeah, but usually I, I do some business simulating games, so um, it, it will be on the same line. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Yeah. We'll yeah. See. Cool. Now the normal process when a designer is working on a game is that they will work on their game and they will play test it with their friends and you know they'll they'll refine it and then eventually they will get to a point where they want to start approaching publishers and you will you will have a meeting with them and you'll sit down with them and you'll show the game and they'll say no and then you'll go to another publisher and eventually hopefully you'll find a publisher that makes your game and then the publisher will then go off and find an artist and everything else now with you Weather Machine, I'm going to guess, is yep. going to happen, is going to be published by Eagle Griffin, and Ian O'Toole is doing the artwork. Probably, yeah. Probably. Yeah, and that, that is the great <laughs> thing now compared well, to where and, you and were. You probably, and you probably will edit the rules. And so. then I'll edit the rule book. But this I is the thing now. Yeah. Your, your reputation and your popularity mean that, you know, it, it's already certain that the game is going to be coming out. We know what box size it's going to be. We know Ian O'Toole is going to be doing the artwork. Well, and that's it, great. I don't have a contract yet, but if Eagle no. Griffin wants the game, probably it will be the same team as usual yeah. because we are we know each other already. Yeah. And we know how to work together, yeah. and the result is good, right? So yeah. um, hopefully, the result is good. So uh, it's a good team. So we should keep it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, but that is true. I probably don't have a problem publishing the game, unless it's it's not a good game. But <laughs> but I hope that will not happen. So yeah. And the other thing on a on a on a on a personal note for you, I'm obviously designing complex, heavy games is yeah. a niche market. Okay. If you it were is. to design a nice, easy, light to medium weight euro it would be massively popular and it would sell really well. But you didn't. You designed super heavy, crunchy, complex games. The good thing is, compared to where you were five years ago, your games are now well known, they're popular, and people are playing them. And it, I think it's a hard market to crack into, and you've managed to do that. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got lucky in the beginning because mm -hmm. market was not very export at the time, and not many publishers want to publish um, uh, heavy games in yeah. 2010 when I published Vinyush for the first time. And I got lucky with What's Your Game? That was, yeah. uh, uh, at the time, one of the few <clears throat> small companies that wants to publish heavy games. And since there, I think the market of heavy games, it's a niche, it's still a niche, but it's growing. Yes. And there are more people playing and willing to play heavy games. and. And there are a lot more um, new, not as new, but uh, some new designers making heavy games because yeah. the market is bigger and uh, there are more publishers willing to publish uh, heavy games. Uh, you interview David yesterday. David does uh, yeah. medium heavy games, right? So and so and uh, at the time only probably Martin Wallace <laughs> would be the only one. And making those kind of games. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, okay. Plata, probably. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it, question in from target because it's more fantasy targets. So, yeah. yeah. Question in from Andy from One Man and His Meeple is that you build a solo mode into many of your games. Do you actually play a lot of solo games yourself? Well, I, I could say that I play solo games in the beginning of playtesting because right. I, I play test the game by myself okay instead of uh, involving people and the game is not working i prefer to play test the game uh, right. in private by myself and i think the solo game for me is a bit natural because i do it solo for a while before the game starts to developing and right. playtesting with 
more people. So and but nowadays probably most of the games have a solo uh, playtest, yeah. have a solo sorry, have a solo mode. But uh, oh, for for this game that we have in the scenario here, uh, Kanban, um, uh, I invite uh, David to yeah. uh, to build the solo game uh, with me. He, he built it alone, but uh, he followed my 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 some of my instructions, my ideas in the beginning. I gave him some of my ideas, and he is a great solo designer. So yeah. Um, yeah, this game but, has a great solo. Uh, but do you actually play any solo games yourself outside of your own games? I do. I do. So, well, um, usually when I buy a game and it has a solo game, before mm -hmm. I teach the game to my friends or to, to place the game on the table with more people, I play a couple of solo, uh, of solo okay. games. After people know of the, the to play the game, I, I don't play it anymore. Right. It's very rare. It's very rare. Especially because if I want to play solo, I have to play test my game. So <laughs> that time I will do it on my game. So right. yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, um, uh, Paul, a uh, mutual friend of ours, Mr. Paul Inkow is in the chat. Hi, Paul. Thank you for joining in. Hi. Um, has the design process changed for you now that you have so many games in your catalog? Well, I don't have that many games, but uh, <laughs> Nizia has a lot of games, <laughs> not me. But uh, I didn't change. Well, technology changed the, the process a little bit because yeah. I start to play testing online with people from everybody in the world um, earlier than uh, I did in the beginning in my first games. Uh, but mainly the, 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 the way to think and the, the creativity process is the same. It doesn't change that much. I just uh, look for more feedback. I play test it more often because I can place it online. Mm -hmm. I can play test it online, and I, I receive more feedback because it's more people uh, playing the game, and yeah. this spe this speeds up the process of uh, publish the game. But uh, the, the the system I use is the same. Paul, I still want you to develop my games. You are just <laughs> not being there <laughs> lately, yeah. so. waiting um, for weather machine or. So Matt wants to know, how was it, how did it feel to be mentioned on South Park? Oh, that was amazing. I told my, <laughs> my wife that, yeah, I told my wife, is the Simpsons just mentioned me, I would retire. So, right. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a huge thing. I still have it on my, my archives. So it's right. very funny, very cool. Thank you. Uh, um, it, it felt good, right? <laughs> it felt yeah, good. I can imagine. Um, yeah. James James wants to know which game have you enjoyed designing the most? I think all of those, all of my games, because uh, it's uh, it, it took me it, it takes me a lot a lot of time to design a game, so I have to enjoy the process. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So during the three sometimes four years that I'm designing the game, yeah. I have enjoyed that time and I really enjoyed it. It's, it's, well, I, I'm leaving my, my, my dream uh, job right now, so <laughs> I really like to design games. It doesn't matter which one. So. Yeah, so it sounds like, yeah, you, you, you like the process of designing a game. It doesn't really matter what uh, the game yeah. is. Well, I, I love all the process from the creation of the game until the game is on production. Uh, yeah. I work on advertising for many years, and the production part and the creation part is is on me. It's something that I always did during my life, and so yeah, I really enjoy the process from creating the game since the beginning, making the research, playtesting, um, editing the rules. <laughs> it's yeah. not a very good. It's very difficult. It's the the, the difficult, difficult, the most difficult part of the process of making a game is to edit the rules and make it. Uh, a very good rule book. After all, yeah. if you don't have a good rule book, and you agree with me for sure, Paul, uh, with a complex game will be much more difficult. People play. can't play it. So, yeah. And don't forget the best part of the design process is me and you having an argument at three o'clock in the morning about whether something should be worth two points or three points. You can't, yeah. you can't beat those times. <laughs> <laughs> that is part of the process. <laughs> it's True weird. story for people watching. Yeah. yeah True yeah. story. Uh, yeah. So, um, da, 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 da. question from Rick: Would you ever design a dungeon crawler? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't because I'm not. Um, I don't know much about it. 
Uh, it's not my kind, or at least the, the type of game I'm going after. Mm -hmm. uh, but maybe, I, I don't know, maybe in the future and I can make some research. <laughs> yeah. But uh, not in my plans, sorry, for, yeah. for now, at least, yeah. Yeah. Um, question in from Scott. Who is your favorite playtester and why is it Shelley? <laughs> it's Shelly on the, on the, yeah, Shelly is my favorite playtester. Okay, <laughs> she tell us the story. Then she gives me a lot of uh, feedback lately. Yeah, but Shelly, sorry, but there are so many, so many in the, on the Discord that are so good. So right. Julian is one of them. Uh, Paul Inkow that is not usually there uh, is also a good, a great playtester. Uh, Jake is a great test. Well, I, I'm saying the names of people there, uh, yeah. Scott and uh, so many people there. So, yeah. yeah. Do you find that on your Discord channel, where you're doing a lot of your private playtests, do you find that people are... What, what I'm trying to get across is, if I was a fan of yours, if I was just a gamer and I was a fan of yours, you were my number one designer, <laughs> and you said, Paul, come onto my Discord channel and playtest my game with me. How honest is everybody on there? Do, is everybody honest and they give you direct feedback or do you think some people don't want to say anything bad? Well, I think if people does want to say anything, they don't. Uh, many right. people play, play test with me and doesn't say anything. Uh, and I'm always inviting new people to the Discord to play test the game. Yeah. Because more people, it's better, right? More power, pair of eyes, more opinions, more feedback, more, uh, more different ideas. And um, usually... I, I try. I usually say to people that I don't want to know the good things. I just want to know yep. the bad things because yep. I I have time to change them. Yeah. Uh, uh, because if you just give me the bad things after the game is published, <laughs> it's too late. <laughs> I cannot do anything. So yeah. But that's the time for for getting the the the, the bad things on the game, and there are a lot. Yeah. The process is long, as you know, and um, yeah, it's always changing and always changing. The the, the first a lot of time you play test games, uh, it, uh, they are completely different from the last uh, the, oh, yeah. the version. Yeah. So, and it is a process with good and bad things. Usually the designer is just a filter of the good and bad feedback that you receive. Right. And you have to know, if, if you are a good designer, I think you have to know if the good feedback, that uh, not the good feedback, but the good things that are telling you about the game, it doesn't, don't, uh, hide the bad things that should be told. Yes. Okay. Can, can you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. No, what you I, said I, is... Um... He under the lines what you, in fact, are saying about the playtesting. Yeah. I've, I've heard this before from other playtesters. Um, uh, oh, sorry, from other designers who organize playtest sessions is that, you know, at, at the end of the game, you give them all a piece of paper and you say, I want you to write down the number one thing that you didn't like about the game. And that's it. Just I, that's all I want to know is if, if you thought the game was amazing, I still want you yeah. to think of the thing that you didn't like you and didn't write like. that down. And that's all I want. I, I like to see to 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 hear those things, but I also have to to know. Uh, you 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 can please everybody, right? Yeah. And oh yeah. I, I have to make sure that even if someone doesn't like something in a game, and it may be for they only played once, so it's not. You have to know if they are right or not, and yeah. that's the, the hard decision to to, to make in the in um, yeah. in, in, in the playtesting to design a board game. That's yeah. to, to 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 decide which are good feedback and which are not that good feedback. Yeah. Um, what is your uh, sorry? Any update on surviving Mars? Yeah, there is. That's what I'm currently working on. Right. Um, yeah, Surviving Mars is an expansion for On Mars. Um, uh, some people already know about it. Um, it. It's an expansion that I'm designing for Surviving Mars that will make Surviving Mars, uh, sorry, that will make um, uh, On Mars uh, not only cooperative, but what I'm designing is like a, a, a short story with five chapters. Mm -hmm. And each chapter is one has one kind of game. Okay. Right. So this is the, I, I'm designing. I'm going to a field that I 
it's not my usual field because I'm on the field of uh, sci-fi. Mm -hmm. So we will have aliens. Uh, the story starts that uh, the aliens think that humans are viruses and yeah. they don't want us to spread over the universe. So they go to Mars to stop us to build the colony. Okay, right. that's how the story starts, and this is the chapter one that is called Invasion. So in this in this story, we have one against all. So uh, yeah. the players are humans, and there is one alien that are uh, trying to stop the humans from building. And right. then from that, well, I have four more chapters that makes different games, and three of the games are cooperative games, and the last chapter is competitive and solo game. So right. you, with the expansion, can play five different games, smaller games, like 90-minute games, two hours game, okay. uh, using the, the main game, the, the, the On Mars, but uh, with a different um, uh, sync about the yeah. uh, way the game works. And this is terrible. If, if been, that uh, has been terrible to play testers because most of them know the game and um, they try to play competitively yeah. instead of cooperatively. Right. And the way you sing for a cooperative game is completely different. Yeah, from yeah, yeah. So we lost a lot. And right. And usually we lost a lot and we lose and lose and lose until, uh, until we finally win. And so, yeah. So basically, this is Surviving Mars. It's a short story with five chapters that uh, define five games that can right. be competitive to one against all and cooperative games also. So, yeah. yeah, excellent. Um, right. What is your opinion on legacy games? Well, this is a mini legacy, <laughs> but uh, you can play it separately. But I like Pandemic. It was the only one I, I played uh, right. with my family from... I didn't finish. Uh, I, I made most of the game. But I like it, but uh, I think it's too much work to, 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 to make a game like that. Uh, okay. Because um, you have to play test it a lot. I play test a lot of my games, and I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think that... I could play test enough a legacy game right. because you have a lot of chapters, right? So and yeah. yeah, and that's very difficult to play test a campaign. Yeah, unless they are the stories are very similar and you don't have to play test a lot some okay. of them. Uh, what about um, what about the concept of legacy games being you know destructible components that you can't then play them again afterwards? Uh, it's it's fun. Okay. <laughs> I think it's fun. Yeah. Well, I didn't destroy much my my legacy. I, I like to. I, I'm a collector also. I'm a gamer and a collector, so okay. I, I keep the game as it was from the beginning mostly. Um, but yeah, right. It's it's a different way to to play game, right? So okay. So just a quick thing, the chat is very busy and there's lots of questions coming in. Unfortunately, I have another game scheduled for three o'clock that I need to set oh, okay. up and learn how to play. So. What, what we're going to do is we're going to wrap this up in the next five minutes, but if you're free at some point later in the weekend, we can try and organise another one, right? If oh, you're free. It's okay for me. Yeah, it might not be today, but it may be tomorrow. <laughs> I, I like to talk, so... <laughs> yeah, uh, and yeah, we got we got lots of questions coming in. But we got time for a couple of other questions. Um, uh, so Aaron is saying he just beat the Martian Potato Survival Scenario for the first time last night. Excellent. Well done. That's cool, right? yeah. Is there any game, this is from Alan, is there any game that you've played where you didn't enjoy the game, but you appreciated the design? Oh, a lot of them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There, there's a lot of them. I cannot say anything in concrete, but there are some games that I really understand the design. Oh, I, I can say one, for instance. Hopefully, David, don't be mad with me, but... Uh, <laughs> Teo 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 Kan Teo yeah. Teo Teo Kan Teo Teo Kan. It's a great game, and I can see the the, the design that they are made are uh, amazing. But I didn't enjoy to play the game. So okay, but uh, it, it's not the design; it's just me. <laughs> yeah. So that that wasn't David. That was Danielle Tashini. David did the uh, solo mode. David did the solo game, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, what else have we got in the chat? Are there any Easter eggs in your games? Well, I, I think I have a small message in my all of my games, so I, I like to be a little bit. I, I like sarcastic, so I like to be okay. a little sarcastic, and I have some 
hidden message on all my games. For instance, if you see the gallerists, you can see how I treat the arts. And I, I, I'm, I'm not an artist, but uh, I, I, my, my, my formation is in that direction. But then I can see all the art critics are uh, working with the, the arts, uh, the art reviewers and the, the, the people who sell art. Probably doesn't matter if the art sometimes is good or not. It's yeah. just um, uh, the the artist that counts. Okay, yeah. so the promotion around the artist. So and this is one of the Easter eggs that I have uh, okay. on my games, and I have some. Yeah, I have some. Uh, what are your favorite lighter games? My favorite lighter games. I have a few uh, because usually I play long games and lighter games. Uh, light are very light, like feelers. So, for instance, mm -hmm. I, I love For Sale. Yeah. One of the games I like the most. I like, well, some people say that is not a game. Um, the one that you take cards and try to do know the numbers is The Mind. The Mind, yeah. <laughs> I love that game. Uh, I like Gold Names. I like Gold Names. Yeah. And so, there's a lot of fillers that I really enjoy to play, and I play with my family a lot with them. Right. So, uh, so yeah. it's it's fillers or super heavy long games. Yeah, that's my favorite. I don't right. say that I don't play the other games, but of course I do. But um, my favorite is the, the extremes. I, I really like fillers, and I really, really like to be involved in the game for yeah. three or four hours. Uh, yeah. Is uh, is Brass still your favorite game? It is. Okay. Lancashire, but Lancashire. So <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, which one is your favorite? No, it's Lancashire still, yeah. Right, okay. I, I think the new game has too much stuff uh, that is not needed. So. Right, okay. Is, is the correct answer. <laughs> uh, right, okay. Let's see if I can dig out a couple of questions just before we wrap things up. Um, so, a question in from Cisco. All games have a hi an accurate historic component. Is this really an important thing for you, bro? I've developed the core mechanism, Lisboa and Vinyos. So yeah, we kind of answered that earlier on, I think. It was, he was talking about the, um, basically the referencing uh, the yeah. amount of research that you do. Especially the ones that history, that have history behind. Yeah, uh, yeah. I try to have them as, as uh, real as possible, yes. Yeah. Uh, for instance, right now, Surviving Mars, we have aliens. So <laughs> yeah, so you've had to do a lot of research into aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and I talk with I talk with Ian to to make if he want he, if he was available to make the surviving Mars uh, art, and he said yes, and then he said for me I, I never designed aliens, so it would be cool. So. Right. Okay. Interesting. Right. So yes, we do need to wrap things up. As I say, uh, there's been so many messages in the chat. If we can get together at some point tomorrow, we might do part two of a live Q and A with Vitty. Yeah, we'll chat privately, and we arrange that. Soon. And we'll and we'll sort it. And when we chat privately, you can tell me about all of these other Easter eggs in your games because I did not know about this. So. None. Okay. No. No, yeah, I didn't. Everyone has a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm I'm curious to find out more. So anyway, yes, thank you very much to everybody for joining me today. Uh, and I should have said this at the start, but this live Q&A and all of the other videos that I'm doing this weekend are all part of Virtual Gridcom, which is a free to attend online convention that I'm running this weekend. Uh, we have a Discord server, people are turning up, lots of games are being played. Vitaly's demoing his own games. Uh, and on the side of that, I'm raising money for a charity raffle. Uh, raising money for the Chrysalis Youth Empowerment Network. If you want to donate, and if you are watching this video and you have a one pound free, it's all I'm asking, please donate. Um, Justgiving.com forward slash virtual grid con. You can go on there now. We're raising money for the kids in Africa to help them build some classrooms. And at the moment, pay for food because the situation in Africa is a little bit tricky at the moment with everything. So yes, uh, decided we're doing a charity raffle. We have approximately three and a half thousand pounds worth of prizes that we are giving away publishers have been extremely generous we have a huge amount of games that we're giving away and we have currently raised about seven thousand pounds for charity which is 14 is times what we wanted to nice raise to do, Paul. Yeah, yeah um yeah it, it's fantastic what's going on over there at the moment and thank you all for your support um i've probably put about 80 hours of work into organizing all of this over the last two weeks and seeing that amount of money being raised makes it absolutely worthwhile. So yeah, thank you very much for making my time worthwhile in putting it all together. 
Right, I yeah. will let you get on, Vittel, because you've got to go and yeah. you've got to go and teach some people how to play Kanban. Join the table. We have a, a game right now at yep. three o'clock, I think. Uh, play, let's play Kanban. Yeah. Okay. Right. In the cool. new table. If you guys want to watch, yeah, you are welcome. Okay. Yeah. Pop onto the Discord channel and you can all join in and uh, well, not yeah. join in with the game because it's full, but you can you can watch what's going on. Okay. Right. Thank, you. thank you for having me, Paul. No, thank you. you very much, Vittel. Always good to talk to you, and I will see you all in another stream soon. Cheers, all. Bye, bye guys. Thank you. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.